any questions. Um, and if you do, you can go ahead and unmute uh, yourself. Hi. Hi. Um, so I had a question about um, searching maiden names versus married names. Yes. Would you recommend instead of putting both the maiden name and the married name together in one search, dividing them and doing separate searches? Yes. Yes. So you're definitely going to want to do two separate searches because you're going to um, get records that are tied to each individually um, and they're not going to show up if you do both. Okay. Great question. Um, I also have another question, and you might be doing this later. Um, can you show an example of using wildcard search? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I'll show you all what that looks like. Okay, cool. Because, um, yeah, it's it can be really powerful. All right. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Well, great. Um, since we don't have other questions, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to demo what this looks like. So. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. Um, and we're going to start at our website. Um, and I'm going to show you how to get there. And then we're also going to do some exemplar searches. So from the North Shore Library website, we're going to first click on e-resources. And then we're going to click on databases. And then we're going to scroll down to where it says genealogy. So it's about halfway down the page. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and click on that link, Ancestry Library Edition. And that's gonna take us um, to the page uh, where we need to press North Shore. Um, now it will ask you to log in. I have logged in previously and it saved my login. Um, so, but at that point you will be prompted to enter in your barcode and PIN. Um, and you can let the library know um, if you have any trouble with that. Um, we can answer questions by voicemail, um, by email. There's um, a librarian on chat from 10 to 5 on weekdays. Um, so if you come into trouble with any of that, let us know. Um, so for here, from here, we are going to get into the Ancestry um, database. Um, we're going to click that green begin search button. So this is really where um, we can start. So as I mentioned, um, the census is a really great place to start. Now the nice thing is that the census has been pretty nicely integrated with Ancestry. Um, so you can really get a lot of results pretty easily. Um, Okay, so we are gonna go ahead and start inputting. So I'm gonna say, so to practice these wildcard searches, we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use that um, star. It's a little hard to see there, it's pretty small, but it's the star character, so shift eight. Um, and then I'm gonna say ill, because we're gonna say um, we would want results for a will or a bill. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and we'll just say Smith so I can use that example later in the last name. Um, oh, Patty Smith, like the musician. Um, okay, so, and this is where you can input all sorts of data. Um, and again, as I said, less really is more. So honestly, I would start just with a name first and then you can add in things. Now, with a more common name, that might be challenging at first, and you might want to add in some parameters at first, but I would, I would add in as few as you can. Um, all right, so let's say, you know, the one other data we're going to say is, let's say we know this person was born in Milwaukee. So we will add Milwaukee. And we're going to say Milwaukee County, because um, we want to be broad. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and click search. Probably going to get, okay, we're going to get a lot of results. <laughs> um, so, and this is where you start filtering. Um, and this is, and if you can see here, one of the nice things is it's giving me Will. If we scroll down, we'll probably see it's giving me Bill. Um, so that's a really nice, if you um, have an ancestor with a more common name like that or a name 
you know, that can have a lot of iterations, that wildcard search is really powerful. Um, so, and this is where you would start filtering. Um, you can do the edit search um, and you can start inputting more information. Um, so one other nice thing that Ancestry does is it lets you give an approximation with years. Um, so it's only, you know, it will, and you can see here it has these check marks for exact. Um, so it can be really nice if you don't know exactly when an ancestor is born or exactly how they spell um, their name, it gives you a little wiggle room um, and the wildcard search helps with that. Um, but yeah, so we um, would just keep inputting data um, to you know, refine and get a better idea um, to, to find our specific ancestor. So we would just want to start narrowing here. So let's say I do know that they were born within the city, not the county. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to update that. Let's say I know they were born about 1900. And you can see here, I can set it. So okay, I know they were born about 1900. So I'm going to say five-ish years. And then I'm going to update the search. All right, great. And that you know, limited us from 14,000 to 2,000. So it did, it did um, filter our results quite a bit. Um, so, and you could just keep going, keep adding information, um, and that would um, keep the results um, filtered and filtered until you have a smaller pool and you can know for sure exactly that those were your relatives. Um, so I do want to show you quick what the, the forms look like and what it looks like. So let's say we knew that this person was the relative we were looking for. Um, so to see the actual data from the census, we would click in. Um, and it, one nice thing that it does is it, it actually highlights for you um, where it has been digitized from. Um, so you can go in and see the original form. Um, and again, one of the reasons I meant I, you know, strongly encourage you to start with the census is because you can see there's all this data here. There's a lot of data for you to work with. Um, so it, it makes it really um, the easiest way to start tracking down ancestors. All right. Um, well, there's an exemplar search. Um, I also wanted to highlight one other resource that we are currently offering while our physical location is closed. Um, uh, and that is the Access Newspaper Archive. So um, actually, I'll just show you on the website. So we do have a nice little section um, of resources that we are currently offering um, while our physical location is closed. Um, and this Access Newspaper Archive um, is a really powerful way to define records. Um, so if there is some family history that you know of that could have been published in a newspaper, um, that's a really nice resource to look at too. All right, well, there is a basic overview of how to use Ancestry um, and how to use um, you know, the most strategic ways to search. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen um, and I will ask again if there are any other questions um, before we head out for the night. Hi, Marianne again. Hi. <laughs> Hi. So I have more questions. Right. Well, I have one more. Um, so I'm guessing when you're doing this kind of searching and I've looked at Ancestry a little bit, you end up finding other names of spouses, other family members. Mm -hmm. Is there a way other than just making your own notes about other people to just click on their names and get linked to a search for those people? Um, yeah, so I do believe that it, um, they're not hyperlinked that way, if that makes sense, on every record, but on some of them there are. Um, so let me, I'm going to go back into screen share. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, thanks. Yeah, of course. All right. So if you can see here, I've just scrolled down to the bottom. So you can see that this data is all not hyperlinked. Um, but this is, um, and these 
um, are, you can see here, it's the heading household members. Um, so we could go ahead and click those. Um, and it would take us to the data about that person um, right away. Um, I don't know that it would send us to a whole new search, um, but it does hyperlink um, that way. If we go back to the results. Um, yeah, I was just going to mention it kind of looked like when we clicked that other name, it just showed us that person's information in the same census record. Yes, yes. So it's going to okay. give us that data from that record about them, but okay. yeah, I don't believe it's going to hyperlink to a separate search. Okay. Sorry, I'm just going to check this page. Yeah. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately there's not, you know, like it'd be really nice if there was, um, it does give you a, a little snapshot here, but um, I'm just trying to find a record where it says, other people. Um, so records like a marriage record or a birth record will often have the names of the other people involved. Um, so like for example, a marriage record, it will say a spouse um, or birth record, the parents. Um, but yeah, it does appear in plain text. I don't, I don't believe it's hyperlinked. Yeah, which is too bad. It, it, that would be nice. That would be a nice feature. Yeah, well, it's good to know when you're searching that you need to make your own notes. Yes, and I, I do believe Ancestry's um, like personal edition has some features like that. You can check out this charts and forms um, section. Um, so this does give some good exemplars of um, the type, you know, of nice ways to keep your family records. Um, so you can download these um, and use them to help organize. All right. Were there any other questions? I was wondering, um, do you know how you said the most recent census is 1940? Yes. But like, what's the oldest census you've seen? Oh, that's a great question. So, broadly speaking, um, the interesting, so, okay, back up. So, every census like every place has a different census that it goes as far back on, um, which I mean, makes sense just given that, you know, when they were doing the first censuses, um, our country looked very different um, and didn't have all the states. So we have records for censuses going all the way back to like 1800, 1790, um, but they're gonna be really patchy um, and they're not gonna cover um, you know, a large geographic area, again, which makes sense because we didn't have <laughs> nearly as many states then, um, but they are national um, for what existed. Um, there are problems. I know for a fact the 1890 census is one. Um, the building where the 1890 census literally was held, um, I think was demolished. So they're only, or like it, it caught on fire. Um, yeah, I was right. Yeah, the, um, the 1890 census. So there's only a handful of counties in the country that still have, that we still have records for from the 1890 census, just because the, the records were literally destroyed. Um, so that's one I know we don't really have. Um, okay. Yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they do go back, I mean, pretty far. Like I said, it just, it can get patchy, um, which I think is just, you know, a product of historical records. Okay. All right. Well, uh, thank you all for coming. Um, and good luck in your genealogy searching um, and feel free um, as I mentioned, there are numerous ways to contact us while our physical location is closed. Uh, so feel free to leave us a voicemail, um, send us an email. You can chat with a librarian from 10 to 5 on weekdays um, as questions come up. And I really hope you enjoy this uh, resource that we're able to offer. Um, and good luck searching. <laughs>